Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In the last video we looked at um, testing uh, token authentication uh, in our Django REST framework app. In this video we'll be looking at GitHub Actions uh, which is a new way of doing CI CD or continuous integration and continuous delivery right inbuilt in uh, GitHub. Uh, previously we were using technologies such as Travis uh, CI but now with this new feature in GitHub, it has made work much easier and this is what we'll be doing. So without further ado, let's jump straight back to the code. So in, uh, in the last video, we still had two failing tests and on running PyTest, we'll see it was the, the detail test as well as the delete test. Uh, but uh, before we go into GitHub Actions, um, let us discuss continuous integration and continuous delivery. So if I come to Chrome and uh, just type CICD, maybe just to Google that. So uh, there's a huge importance of doing continuous integration and this is where we use um, an isolated environment in the cloud or in another server. Uh, that will help us to integrate our code and to push that. The importance of this is, first of all, when you are working as a group, you might find that most of, sometimes uh, your code might work in your local computer, but you'll find, for example, your server environment is different or your staging environment is different. And for all these different environments with different, for example, uh, Python environments. So for example, right now, yeah, of course, we have two failing tests. So if I clear this and just do Python version, right now I'm running Python 3.6.9, but you might find perhaps in the server we are running 3.7.1. And in another pass, in another developer's computer, they might have installed maybe three, uh, Python 3.8. So it's good uh, to have one uh, source of truth in terms of testing and uh, we'll be using GitHub Actions. So uh, I'm just going to Google here GitHub Actions. Oops, I think I joined it with the previous one. GitHub Actions. And I'm going to click on the first thing that pops up. Uh, this was in beta, in, in beta stage uh, a few months ago, but I believe now it's uh, it's mainstream. And another thing uh, what we can be able to do is automating our workflow as is being explained. And whenever we push or merge or do any sort of uh, work that we can define in our repository, we can set up a Linux environment, a Mac OS environment, and a Windows environment. So for example, right now I'm developing in Windows, but on Windows subsystem, subsystem for Linux. So we can be able to set up Linux environments or Mac OS environments uh, and be able to mirror exactly what is in our server. And what this will mean is that uh, before this code is published to the master branch, we can pass a few tests that we write and that's the only way that uh, our code will be rendered uh, useful. So for example, if I come and, uh, let me just come and search a popular repository. So let's say I look for Django. Um, so I'm, I'm going to check out Django. One of the things you are going to notice is here there's this tick mark. Uh, the latest commit for this repository was just done six hours ago at the time of recording. And if I click on this tick, you'll find that uh, there was some checks on documentation that was done. There was Flake 8 that was done. This is more of uh, code linting. I thought was done enough. Another few things that were, were done. And if I click on one of them, let's say details, it's going to open up. Okay, this is, so here they are using Jenkins, but in our case, we are going to be using GitHub Action. So without further explanation, I think let's just uh, set up um, GitHub Action. So uh, whenever you open up a repository, and this should be your own repository, it cannot work if you're not the owner of the repository. So on top here, you should see a GitHub Actions or an Actions tab. In this case, there are reasons, so let's set, set one up. So I'm going to click on settings. I'm going to come here on the left and I'm going to check on actions. Wait for it to load. 
and you can see for now this is disabled so i'm going to click the first one enable local and third party actions for this repository it's done and now if you look here at the top there's an actions tab so i'm going i'm going to click back on the code and you can see or for example in our case we don't have any check mark here so i'm going to click on actions and you can see there's a few uh first of all here on the top right you can see they are saying we can skip this and set up our own workflow but we need to uh to use uh, some templates so here he's saying to get started with github actions we can choose up a, a, a workflow and there's some example workflows here you can see there's one for django there's one for python application for python packages for people who are building that or for people who want to publish python packages and there's many 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 more so if i click more workflows you can see some for ruby some for node.js for php developers but for us we are working with python and specifically django so i'm going to click on set up this workflow and you can see right off the bat it's created something called django.yaml uh, this is how it's uh, pronounced yaml and you can call this whatever you want. I can change this to be actions.yaml or my Django project.yaml, doesn't matter. And here we have a few things. So this this something called uh, name. By the way, before I continue, YAML files is what is usually used. If you've worked with Docker before, uh, this is, uh, or Travis C, uh, Travel CI, uh, you'll find that YAML is a type of file that is used to configure uh, um, environments uh, and because also for GitHub Actions, one of the things it will be doing is uh, setting up a container that is going to do a couple of things. So this one, we can call it whatever we want. So for example, let's call it uh, PyTest CI. You, again, you can call, you can give this workflow any name you want. So this is the name of the workflow. And it's saying on push, that is whenever we push code to GitHub, whenever we run, um, you know, git push origin. Uh, and we want to push this on branches master. So for now, we only have one branch. And if I come back to the code here, you'll find that we only have one branch, which is master. But you'll find that usually... In real life projects, we'll have other branches, let's say develop, or you can have another one, which is maybe feature one. And you can list all the branches that you want uh, this uh, workflow to work on. For now, since we have master, we're only going to work with master. And also for dealing with pull requests, we'll only deal with master branch. We don't have other. So, that's just um, uh, settings for that. Then we have the jobs where we are saying we need to build something. Uh, we want this entire project to, to run on Ubuntu, the latest. You can specify which Ubuntu version you would want. For example, here in my, lo in my local machine, I have Ubuntu 18.04, so you can do that. But usually, it's usually advisable to run on the latest version of Ubuntu because on the server, whenever we, you run sudo apt up, upgrade, it can be able to do that. So we want to run four things in parallel. And uh, this is another important one, the Python version. Uh, another advantage of using uh, CI or continuous integration is uh, you can be able to test your code on different versions of Python. So we saw that in our local machine, I'm running 3.6, but what if our server is 3.8? So, so here we are saying run it on Python 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. We, we can even add 3.5. Again, you have to check which versions uh, that your users are using or which environments you've set up. For now, because of time, I think I'm only going to run on 3. Point, I'm going to exclude the latest one, which is 3.8, just to save time. Uh, so we can run two so that we can see the differences. Uh, we, we do the actions checkout. Uh, it's Python here. That one is default. You just leave it like that. 
but uh, here another uh, an important one is that uh, we need to install dependencies so first of all we upgrade pip then we pip install dash r requirements.txt remember in our projects here we have a uh, oops where is it we have a uh, requirements.txt so we are telling it to install all of this uh, then we run our tests using Python. The default one is Python manage.py test. But remember, we removed this from the default Django. Oops. Uh, we, we are no longer using the default Django test case. So we are just going to run PyTest. So after that is done, uh, we are going to start commit. The commit message is uh, created. Uh, workflow we commit directly to the master branch another way you can do is that you can create a new branch then you do a pull request but that takes a lot of time this is usually important if you are doing a git flow uh, a git flow which is a method of you know uh, working with projects but for now we're just going to commit directly so i'm going to commit then commit the new file like so and now if we come back to django and django rest framework you can see there's a dot here this yellow or uh, um, brownish dot means that uh, there's something going on if i click on it we can see there's there's two builds happening on our pytest ci on python 3.6 and 3.7 i can click one of them in a new tab i'm going to close this we can see that it's setting up the job it's uh, and it's set up python it has downloaded python 3.6 now is installing dependency so it's collecting all of them and you can see here something is has gone wrong and it's unable to build so there's an x and this error has come when you're installing dependencies let's see where the error is Okay, so if we come back to the code, uh, we are going to see an X, meaning there's, there's some things failing. If I come to the 3.7, let's see, uh, it installed dependencies, but it was there was a problem running tests. And if we come to the test, it's saying there's no module called school local settings. Okay, so it cannot find this file. Remember, this is in the pytest.ini file. So let's come back to the pytest.ini file. So it's not unable to find this, and this is maybe because in our git ignore, we put it there, let's see. Yes, we put local settings.py here, we're not supposed to put it, so I'm going to, actually, uh, we had ignored this, and this is because, and bear with me, um hmm, let's see for now okay i'm going to do it the long way for now i'm just going to disable this and push it although ideally what would like to do uh actually let me disable this ideally what you're supposed to do uh this will still work if you push it we had ignored it so it's not being pushed to if i come to our code here it's not being pushed to github that's why it uh, GitHub is, I mean, the CI is complaining that it cannot find the local settings. But ideally, what you would want to do is come to the classroom. I'm just going to come to school and I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to call it GitHub settings. And this is because of one thing. Usually, uh, okay, I need to disable all of this stuff. Usually, you'll find as you are, as you are, and I need to exit this. Uh, as your project grows more complex, you are going to add a lot of things. Let's say Amazon Web Services tokens, you are going to add all sorts of testing that are not necessary for testing PyTest that will go in, the, in your settings.py file. And so to make work easier, it's usually good just to have one standalone uh, GitHub settings that is just going to be for uh, the CI CD. 
and it's going to be very bare minimum whatever we need and we exclude all the co uh, other complexity so it's usually good just to have this so uh with that being done uh what we can be, we, what we can do is uh we can commit all this and we say uh github settings I'm going to run that and I'm going to push this to origin. Okay, it's saying can't push refs to remote, try pulling fast. This is because uh, the reason it's saying that is if you come to our repository here, there's this folder called GitHub workflows that has been created where your, our YAML file is. And because this is not in the local repository yet, and because we created it online, we need to come here and uh, pull, pull from origin, origin master, okay. And now after pulling, we should have this folder, it's been created, and now we push to origin. Now if we come back here and refresh, okay, has it pushed? Yes, it has, refresh this. This should be 20 seconds ago. Again, it's running. Uh, we can open one of them. Let's say the 3.7. And you can see both of them. We can switch between both of them here on this left tab. So setup 3.6 is okay. It's installing dependencies. Come back to 3.7. They are both installing dependencies. I still expect this to fail because there's a few setting, settings that we still need to do. Again, I'm doing this step by step so that whenever you have a problem, you can see how to correctly set up. I have intentionally set it up to fail so that uh, we can understand what is happening behind the scenes. So this is installing dependencies, but as it's doing so, we can see that uh, the tests have failed and it's the error here is... Uh, database password not found and this is coming from python decouple and this is because if you come if i just take this and uh, i come here and search you'll find that in our github settings we've said that the password for our database is config database password and this remember is in our environment sample Okay, so what does this mean? So this means that uh, whenever we've pushed, uh, whenever we push anything uh, in our settings.py file and this, uh, and this anything that is in the, our secret key. So for example, if we put our secret key into our environment, in this case, I deliberately put the database password into config that is in our environment sample. And remember here we, in our environment, we have the actual environment and we have a sample. So this means that uh, we need to have a .env file in our CI, but we cannot push our .env because we are going to push our secrets. And that's why in our .ignore, we've put, uh, where is it? Uh, we've put our env. So the way we do that is uh, now we can edit this uh, in our local file. I'm going to come to GitHub, YAML. And before we install our dependencies, I'm just actually just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to say name. I'm going to say make a dot env file. And what we are going to do is uh, we can be able to convert dot env dot sample, this one, into a .env file. So what we are going to do is run, and because we're in the Ubuntu or Linux environment, the way you do that is you can say cp meaning copy .env .sample, and we need to copy that dot to dot .env. Basically what I'm saying is rename dot this one file into a dot .env, Again, here the password really doesn't matter. This can be anything because it's in a test database that we are going to create and destroy anyway. But I'm just doing this as an example because you can end up having a lot of conf uh, hidden 
uh, I mean a lot of config values that you've hidden in your settings dot you know in your local settings dot py so okay so that is done I come here we say this is dot uh, env create that uh, push to origin come back here come to actions uh, refresh this we should see one dot env which we've just created running i click on this there's two jobs and again we wait for that to happen okay we are almost done i think there's going just to be like three more errors then we can finish that Okay, let's look at Python 3.6, stalling dependencies. The tests are running. You can see now the tests are running. But now, uh, the deep, okay, I'm just going to go down to the tests. You can see the other tests are working, but now we have two, two failing tests. Okay, actually we have many failing tests. Let's see where the problem is. So it's saying, uh, yeah, so it's saying here there's a connection error from PsychoPG2. It's saying the basic connection parameters are we need these values. It's complaining about these values. So let's go back to our GitHub settings and see where the error is so okay so it's saying it cannot be able to create our database because it's uh we need to create this database uh, on github so okay and that is okay so what this means is that we need to create a uh, Let's first see the build for Python 3.7. Run tests to see if they are just similar. Okay, so I need to check one more thing. Just give me a second. I, I just need to check my requirements.txt. This is okay. So one of the things that we can be able to do is that we need to create this database. And the way we do that is that we come back to our django.yaml. So here we've only set up Python, but we also need to set up Postgres. And uh, I'm just going to copy paste from some code somewhere so that we don't spend a lot of time. So I've pasted this code just uh, under strategy. And again, if you've worked with Docker before, you you realize that when working with Django, one of the things you do is you set up services, and this is usually your database or other background services like Celery. In this case, we are saying before we do all the, you know, running everything, we set up a Postgres database on port 5432 because that's what we've said here. Uh, we need uh, our Postgres database is called PyTestDB, which is this one. Uh, post Postgres user, in this case is Postgres, and Postgres password is Postgres. So what I'm going to do is copy this, and I'm going to come dot env dot sample, and instead of that, I paste Postgres. Okay, and again, this is something generic that uh, is usually given uh, from the documentation. Okay, super. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to save this too. And just say Postgres. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to push this to origin. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to come back to actions. Again, we've had uh, three failing tests now. Refresh. We should see Postgres running. Click on this. Again, I'm deliberately making everything to fail so that you know you can see the logic and you can be able also to trace in your app where the, 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 the problems are. So I'm going to come build 3.7. And another thing going forward, actually what I'll do is, uh, I'm just going to disable one of them and I'm going to use Python 3.6 so that, you know, we save time. But 
previously we are running too so that you can see you can be able to do it with multiple builds so you can see here it's initializing containers it set up python and one of the containers here i'm sure it's postgres okay so it's installing dependencies it has already converted our dot env file that's awesome um hmm. installing dependencies or oh, everything done now it's running the tests you can see our tests are starting to pass and now we only have two failing tests awesome and these two two failing tests are the same tests that are failing when we run it on our local host so when we run pytest here these are the two okay super so now it's time to fix so if we come back to i need to close this oops i need to close all this now if we come back to our code uh you're going to realize that uh we, we is, the test is still failing so we need to make our test pass so the reason our test is failing here i i came to realize is because uh sample we close that settings we close that and the views it's because whenever we are using mixer uh, for like delete uh, mixer is also generating a unique primary key so what we need to say here is like for example pk is equals to one so that we can be able to query that and also when you are doing for student here for detail we say pk is equals to one and here also pk is equals to one okay awesome and now in our localhost if we run pytest everything should work oops uh this is a uh, key error first name let's see this is occurring in uh detail okay so oh this needs to be primary key too we cannot have an identical primary key so run that okay so all our tests should pass that is happening I'm going to come and commit that and just say 3.6 alone and all our tests are passing so um i also put this and i say passing tests click on that and now i push to origin wait for it to finish and now if i come back to actions again we've constantly had failing okay run this we can see that this is running i'm going to open this a new tab and i'm just going to open up here the code so we wait for this to finish One job is running, is in Python 3.6, initializing containers, wait for that to finish. As that finishes, uh, let me just open another random, I'm going to open here a random, again I'm going to come to Django, I'm going to open this Django, it can be anything. I don't know if this has badges, this does not have any badges, so... Let me look for something like um hmm, maybe Django REST framework. Open one of those. Um yes, yeah, so if you open uh many mainstream uh, repositories, you'll find that for example this one has this badge and it's saying the building uh, is passing and we need to put this to uh to our project so that before you even come here to see, you know whether you are using GitHub Actions, you can just see here automatically whether it's passing or it's failing. So I'm just going to say GitHub uh, Actions badges. I'm going to Google that. Uh, do we have, okay, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to, uh, to link this in the description below. And we can see here we have uh, adding a workflow status badge to our repository. 
So it's saying uh, if we are using, it's saying here if you are using a workflow name, and remember in our case, I'm just going to open this Django.yaml. We are we have a a, a work a workflow name. So it's saying if we have a workflow name, we need to use this template. And in this template, I'm just going to come here, and this is supposed to go in our README. So I'm just going to open our README here. Where is it? And I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to close this. Um, let's go back first and see if our test is, has passed. By the way, I need to close this. Not useful. Code. Yes, now we have a tick here which is saying that our code, if I click on this, everything is working and everything is okay. But now let's work on that badge. So if I come here to, it's saying github.com, you replace the word actions with your username. In this case, uh, my username is Geoffrey Nyaga. Then we replace hello world with, you know, the name of our repository. So if we come here, our name of our repository, I can just copy it from here. Or you can just take, uh, or you can also copy it from here. Yeah. So either copy this or you copy it from the URL. So I'm going to replace hello world with the name of our repository workflows. Then what you do is uh, here you see it's written grid, then percentage 20 everyone. So what you're supposed to do percentage 20 is usually like a space. I'll give you an example. Uh, if I come to a good example is, um, okay, Let, uh, there's a site in Kenya called gg.co.ke. And let's say if I want to search, uh, let's say I want to search a car because they also sell cars and say Toyota 2013. Exactly, you find that is Toyota percentage 20, then 2013. So percentage 20 is used in URLs uh, to show, you know, space. So in this case, we replace this with a name. Uh, I'm just going to open up my Django YAML. We replace that with this, with the name of our workflow. So in our case, it was, and it needs to be, this needs to be uh, uh, sensitive about uh, caps. So if it's capital P, then small y, we need to be sensitive to that. So PyTest, then CI. If it's more words, so if we had put maybe PyTest CI XX, make sure to add another percentage 20, then that. And to test if this one is okay, before we deploy, you can copy this, open a new tab, paste that, and you're supposed to see an icon here. So if you make an error, let's say you misspell that, you're not going to find anything. So make sure before you deploy, you see that passing, and you can see it's saying PyTest CI, and this is the name, and this is the name in the Django.yaml, and you see it's passing. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to say uh, badge, push that and push to origin. So if I come and refresh now, okay, wait. Now you can see it's saying PyTest CI passing. The reason it's saying passing is because it has already checked the status of the previous of the previous uh, build that we did in our actions. So it's saying passing. So it's looking at this previous one as it's waiting for this to complete. So if but if if your previous test was failing, is here it's going to say PyTest CI, which is failing. And guys, that's it uh, for uh, for continuous integration uh, you can work on this to include other things like background task uh, or other things that you can build uh, another thing that 
we can be able to do right now this pi test uh, i forgot to say this by default is going to look at uh, pytest.ini and right now it's trying to, to run with this but one of the things you can do is uh, do custom ds which means Django settings so this uh, if you come to pytest and you do dash ds configuring uh, in pytest Django you'll find that uh, you can configure uh, pytest underscore ds and what we can do is that we can say this is equals to school dot uh, github settings which is uh, this file we explicitly tell our ci to always run github settings and then what we can do is that we can copy we can copy the rest of this or we can say then dash no migrations dash v like so okay and uh, let me just push this and we can say dash ds it's just good to be explicit push to origin yes and now everything will be perfect and just refresh this make sure that uh, there's a new build happening and expect that to pass uh, and yeah so that's the end of uh, github ci I'll link a video to, if you want to use other options such as uh, Travis CI, which is what we were using uh, previously before uh, GitHub Actions came, I will link a video from, uh, I believe was Harvard or MIT lecture about uh, Travis CI, but it should be pretty straightforward, almost identical. And again, thank you so much for following my channel. If you're finding me for the first time, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below and I'll get back to you on that one. Please also make sure to follow me on my social media profiles as in uh, listed on my screen. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.